Hello friends, welcome to Chance Code. In this video, we are going to explore how we can return multiple values from a Kotlin function. And in addition to that, we will also try to figure out how Kotlin does this under the hood even though JVM doesn't support it. So let's go ahead without waiting any further. Let's consider that we have a class called user which have name and email as two properties. And we have a method called getUser which returns a user object. In an usual way, if we want to access this user object, then we have to call this getUser method and from there we have to access the name and email property using the reference of the user object. And after that we can go ahead and use the name and email. Notice that in order to access name and email of a user object, we have to write at least three lines of code. Wouldn't it be nice if getUser could return multiple values and we could trim down the code to something like this. Of course this looks much nicer and the best part is Kotlin does support it. But to make it work the only thing you need to do is wrap the name and email values inside a parenthesis. This feature of Kotlin is called as destructuring declaration. Now moving forward this will still fail and the error compiler will throw to us is this. Notice that Kotlin compiler expects two methods called component1 and component2 to be part of user class. And if you are using IntelliJ IDEA by pressing ALT ENTER you can find all these options to fix that. So the solutions are to create functions like component1 and component2 inside user class or create them as an extension functions. In addition to that we can also declare the user class as a data class. So let's go ahead and do that. Once the user class is being converted into a data class, the compilation error vanishes. You may definitely ask that Kotlin compiler was complaining about component1 and component2 functions and we haven't declared those yet. How does making the user class as a data class solve that? And the answer is Kotlin compiler generates the component1 and component2 function on behalf of us because it is declared as data class now. Now let's move ahead with the other alternative and create the component1 and component2 function manually. This also works fine. We have seen both the approaches by applying which we can return multiple values from getUser function. Now the question is how does this being executed by JVM? So let's go ahead and see what is going under the hood. The main function gets converted into public static void main. Here the main function doesn't accept any argument and I have created a separate video explaining how does this work. Please go to the info card above to watch that. Now coming back to the topic the first line of the main function gets converted into something like this and the println gets converted into something like this. By seeing this java equivalent code we can easily understand that even though the get user function looks like returning multiple values. Actually it isn't. And all these values which are wrapped inside the parentheses are being associated with the corresponding component functions of the user class. For example name being the first value inside the parentheses is being associated with the component1 function of user class. Similarly email is being associated with the component2 of user class. Now we might ask another question like what if we need only few values from a function. For example in this case what if we need only name or only email. We can definitely achieve that but before discussing about that let me remove this get user method in order to have more space in the slide. Let's say we need only name from the user object. In that case we can have an underscore in place of the second value inside the parenthesis. By putting an underscore in place of the unused values we have definitely achieved some level of performance because this tells the Kotlin compiler not to call the component2 function. Under the hood it looks something like this. Notice that there is no user dot component2 function call. In this particular example whether you use email or skip it through underscore it doesn't make much of a difference and the reason is component2 function simply returns email property of user class. 
इमेजिन वी हैव ए कॉम्पोनेंट टू फंक्शन विच डज सम हेवी ऑपरेशन इन दोज केसेस वी शुड डेफिनेटली गो फॉर अंडर स्कोर इंस्टेड ऑफ अनयूज वेरिएबल नेम्स मूविंग फॉरवर्ड वी कैन डेफिनेटली स्कीप द अर्लियर वेरिएबल्स एंड यूज द लेटर वेरिएबल्स लाइक दिस इन दिस केस वी नीड ओनली ईमेल एंड वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू यूज कॉम्पोनेंट वन फंक्शन बिकॉज वी डोंट नीड नेम वैल्यू फ्रॉम यूजर ऑब्जेक्ट लेट्स मूव एड विथ फर्दर एग्जाम्पल्स In this case we are trying to return three values from get user function and as expected kotlin compiler will complain about component 3 function inside the user class so let's go ahead and add the component 3 function notice that i have added another property called phone in the user class most of our use cases falls into this categories where we just simply return the properties of a class from the component functions but does that mean the num number of properties present in a class should be equal to the number of component functions of course not we can definitely add n number of component functions as per our requirement for example we can have a user class with only two properties and have four component functions like this in this example user class has only two properties called name and email whereas it exposes four component functions the first two component functions return the properties and the second two component functions return their lengths and this makes the get user function return at max four values so far we have understood that by using destructuring declaration feature of kotlin we can return multiple values from a function and the backbone of this feature are the component functions which needs to be part of the class moreover these functions can also be part of the class as an extension functions in addition to defining these component functions manually we can also achieve this by declaring the class as a data class and under the hood let the kotlin compiler generate these functions on behalf of us but this feature is not done yet destructuring declaration is not the feature which can only be used with respect to class it can also be used in a for loop like this using the older approach to iterate and hash map we could have got the iterator from the entry set of the map and iterate over the iterator by calling the get key and get value of each entry of map and this entire thing is now being converted into a single line in the for loop shown in the example let's now explore how this single line does all this job under the hood the first line of the main function gets an hash map like this and then the iterator of the entry set is being captured you might definitely have a question that being part of the for each loop kotlin compiler ideally should call the map dot iterator then how does this code calls map dot entry set dot iterator and the answer is this extension function defined in the kotlin standard lib so the hash map being part of the for each loop makes the kotlin compiler calls the map dot iterator function and that gets further call into map dot entry set dot iterator because of this extension function moving forward this iterator is now being iterated through a while loop notice that the key and value variables are being assigned by calling the get key and get value from entry of map so even though they are being part of the destructuring declaration syntax kotlin compiler doesn't call component 1 and component 2 function because those functions are declared as extension functions on top of entry class so now it is quite clear how we can use destructuring declaration in a for loop and we are not done yet we can also use destructuring declaration as part of the lambda function like this notice that the lambda passed in the for each function here is accepting a destructured pair and not the two arguments please don't get confused with this lambda function versus another lambda function accepting two arguments hope this video was quite useful to you and you have learned something new out of this video if you liked this video please do like share and subscribe to my channel thank you thanks for watching